about um, benefiting from agricultural residues. I want to carry you through these slides. You can see these are agricultural residues and they may be residues but there are benefits in them. Now, there is a saying that every cloud has a silver lining. But let me tell you, you have to look for that lining. It is also said that waste is wealth, but only if you convert it. So there it is. We want to convert waste to wealth. There is this Charles Kalama who displays plastic poles made out of plastic waste, converting waste to wealth. Not him alone. There is Lona Ruto. Lona Ruto was a banker and she decided to go into entrepreneurship. And look at what she says. Africa has a vast wealth of post-consumer and post-harvest waste that can be used as a resource to reduce pressure on African forests and therefore to create jobs. This is a banger turned into a wealth from waste-making person. And way back, in 1920, there is this Frederick Talbot, and he said, Waste is merely raw materials in the wrong place. And I am saying, I'm adding, that we need to dump our attitude that waste is useless and it needs to be disposed. We need to move away from the attitude that waste is actually waste and should be thrown away. Now, let's talk about agro-waste. All those are agro-waste, be it uh, grass, be it coffee husks, be it groundnut husks, all that is waste. Agro-waste is agricultural residues and they include all this from rice we have waste stock straw husk hull soya bean mustard wood wheat cotton all these crops that we grow on our land on our farms have waste i am sure there is some kind of acro waste just around you. Look at them. Be them corn stock. Be them wood savings. Wood shavings. Be them rice husks. All these are waste. And they are probably just around your backyard. We can go further and classify the agricultural solid wastes into field wastes, into animal wastes, into agro industrial wastes. All these wastes are within our reach. We are calling them wastes, but they can be wealth. Look at that. That is power. That's the power they create. That is the stove. And we are saying, did you really know that Kenya has 14 million tons of agro residues with an energy potential of 188 million gigajoules? Yes. Tons and tons of agro waste. And they have the potential of gigas or gigas of joules. We are not using our waste. Look at that forest cover. Look at the top left hand corner. Our forests are being depleted. People are even encroaching. Women are carrying firewood from the forest. The forest is being cut. Heavy machinery, logging. What are we saying? 
If all the available agricultural residues are used to substitute firewood, then Kenya would reinstate the 10% forest cover as recommended from its current 1.7 cover. We have only 1.7 forest cover. We are supposed to have 10% forest cover. So if we can convert acro waste and stop encroaching on the forest, we shall arrive at that. And I'm saying that every Kenyan county has agro residues being wasted. Look at Transoya, Washingishu, Bungoma, Machakos, Kitui, Makweni, Maize, the stocks and the cops. Look at Washingishu, Naro, Komeru, Elkeo, Marakwet, Kericho, wheat, wheat bran. Look at Kakamega, Kisumu, Migori, Bungoma again, sugar again, the trash, the bakas. Look at Kirinyaka, Busia, Siaya, rice and rice husks. Look at Garissa, Mandera, Nyandarua. They grow tomatoes. The tomato stalks. Look at Bomet, Kericho, Busia, Millet, Millet stalks. Trukana, Baringo, Lamu, Sokam, Sokam stalks. Nairobi, Mombasa, the waste from the open markets, market waste. Nyandarua, Kisi. Nyeri, Tarakaniti, coffee husks. Each and every count of Kenya has a product, a waste from agriculture that is actually going to waste. Now, every Kenyan county, and indeed many in Africa, can help her people convert agricultural residues to money through prequity. This will alleviate the use of firewood and ordinary charcoal and save the diminishing forest cover. At industrial level, factories like Mumias and Muhoroni sugar companies produce more than a million tons of bakash and yet only 700,000 are used annually while the rest are disposed. Those are not my words. That's a researcher. It's empirical study that discovered those facts by Oweno way back in 2009. But then, if I'm talking about prequet, is prequeting profitable? Look at that. Sample this. From the media. Somebody is saying he, they make 250,000 Kenya shillings per month just doing prequel business. Another one says they make 500,000 Kenya shillings. That means like 5,000 US dollars selling and uh, prequels. In Uganda, it is reported that women reap big from charcoal prequets. So indeed, yes, prequeting has been proven to be profitable. Now, if others can profit from charcoal prequets, then you can also profit. Allow me to carry you through a simple process of prequeting. And as I do that, I want you to borrow from that song the 1946 song by Ivan Berlin, who says, Anything you can do, I can do better. And I can do anything better than you. So those examples that we have given profiting from Greek you could actually do better than them. If that sits in you, that you can do better, indeed, you will do it. Now, this is how the process of frequenting goes. First, you will collect your biomass. It's biomass collection. Then, you will dry this biomass. Then, number three, you will carbonize the biomass. Number four, then you will prepare the char dust from the carbonized biomass. Then, you will bind them. You will prepare the binder that you are going to mix with your char dust. And then 
you prepare, you produce the pre-quits, you dry the pre-quits and package them, and there you are, you are selling on the market to get your 500,000 Kenya shillings per month. Now, let's go elaborate. Let me elaborate on that process. Start making your own prequet. That is my message to you. Ask the Joakali artisan to make you kilns like these ones of mine. And these are made from waste metallic drums. There you are. Those kilns that you see are on my little plot, my little farm in Juja, north of Nairobi, next to my university, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Next, collect the biomass, like seen here. You can see these are biomass, these are uh, uh, maize cobs, these are dry matter from, on, on your right, dry matter from my little plot in, uh, in, in, in Juja, as I said. So you collect the biomass, like seen here, and you, then you dry them, must be dried. Then, put the dried biomass into the kilns and cover the kilns with the gin leaves and light them. You see, we are now putting biomass into the kilns that we, we saw on the uh, previously saw. We are putting them. This is being done on the, on the home, your, your backyard. Then, you carbonize. You can see now that kiln. We have put in the biomass. We have now lit it. And you can see we are carbonizing. Carbonization will take place as the biomass burns inside the kilns. But they are stuffed of oxygen. So the oxygen is not entering. And therefore we are carbonizing the, the waste or the, the biomass. Now, when it has carbonized, you can see, you now break the carbonized material from the kilns into char dust that you can see on the right hand, bottom right hand uh, picture. And these now are ready to be mixed with binders and pressed into prequets. Now these are pressing into prequets. You can see they are on the right hand side you can see it, it, this is a wooden manual uh, uh, press this is a, a motor motorized press these are women uh, doing it in their own backyard it looks like a, a means or meat mincer but there it is those are the prequets so you can then start producing you are charcoal prequets from the carbonized. This is the, 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 the wooden machine. This is the extruder, the, the, the metallic motorized machine. Those are the wooden machines. And we are saying that in villages around the world, fuel prequets are being made with the wood or metal press, such as the large mini iron or, uh, or, or the smaller Peterson press. We are also the extrusion prequet machine. And I'm saying, the youth polytechnics in the counties and even the local carpenters and the fabricators in those counties can be trained to produce these gadgets. You don't have to import them. This is creating employment within the counties. After you have done that, you now sun dry the prequets, probably for three days. These are, this is a veteran. He was in the army. He resigned from the army, he's in Nyeri. Now he does this prequets and the demand is too much. He cannot meet the demand. You can see we are now drying all those prequets that we have produced. And then there we are. We have now packaged. You now package your prequets for sale. All these are local co charcoal, cocoa, jumbo, charcoal. All these are prequets now, packaged, ready for sale.
and we are saying that the pre-quakes are best used on special stops. Can you see normal stops up there, grills. The fact that we, they are made on special stops means that we can also create employment by people who make the stops for charcoal pre-quakes. So, more employment creation. So, I want to thank you for listening to me and watching me. I want to say, we can train you, or even your group, your youth group, any group. We can train you on pre skills production. We can train you on pre press production. We can also train you on how to start a home-based pre business. You can see examples of training going on. You can reach us with this on this, uh, uh, please. The, we have our website, www.mukmik.com.co.ke. I have also my own, professorbuisa.com. On my YouTube, Henry Buisa, you will see lots of other videos. You can reach me by that email. You can also call me. Thank you for watching and please let's make wealth out of waste. What is waste? It's not waste. It's not only waste in your own vocabulary, but in an entrepreneur's vocabulary, that waste is wealth. We are sitting, sitting on gold right in our backyard. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed it.